Hi, this is Seymour Rocks, uh, reporting from Down Under, and I'm with my, well, our friend, Kevin Hester, whom uh, we all know, and uh, we've got lots to talk about here, because uh, the headlines today uh, in Australia and New Zealand is that a tropical cyclone is heading towards the Sol Solomon Islands, and even Radio New Zealand is saying that this is a freak out-of-season event, so have you got anything, I'm sure you've got something to say about that, Kevin? <laughs> It's interesting to uh, debate now the times that our tropical cyclone season stretches over. Years ago, we would have said that November to April was the, the cyclone season. And then in, in June 1994, the Island Cruising Association was taking it, uh, a regatta up to the islands. And in the middle of June, they got slammed by what uh, was eventually called the, the June bomb. And climatologists talk about these weather events as being like as being bombs that where they, they evolve quickly and they can be very changeable. The original prediction for the one that in nineteen ninety four was that it wouldn't be so bad. And the cruising association literally sailed up into it not expecting it to, to uh, drop so uh, low in, the, in millibars and become such a ferocious storm. Yeah. So that was the June bomb that was an extraordinary event then. Now, 20 years later, we're talking about a July one. Yeah, and what was this the 1998? Uh, what was 1998? No, uh, yeah, 1998 was the big El Nino, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yeah. I think a main driver of these uh, out-of-season cyclones is the fact that our oceans are warming up and it provides a lot of the horsepower for the yeah. uh, tropical zone cyclones. These aren't these aren't typical lows that are coming out of the Southern Ocean. No. These are tropical cyclones, and of course, if the if the water temperature is a degree or two higher, that just adds velocity and, and puts these these weather events on steroids. Yeah, well, it's the eighty percent or whatever it is of, of heat that's stored in the ocean that we've had for the past uh, fifteen years, isn't it? It is. So I think um, something. If when the reason we're having this conversation is because we're so concerned about the pathway that our climate is on, and I think it's important for everyone who's listening to understand that at the moment we're 0.96 C above baseline, with baseline being the beginning of the industrial revolution. So we're getting all this chaos with less than one degree C above baseline. Yeah. The IPC, IPCC set their target for limiting global warming to two degrees C above baseline. Yeah. When that target was set, just about every scientist on the planet was mortified that they were letting they were setting that target so high. Yeah. Because two C guarantees chaos. Yeah. But now what it's important for everyone to realise is that we are blowing straight through 2C and we're heading on a pathway to 4 and 6. Yeah. Well, I've just been reading a little bit from James Hansen, uh, Hansen's book, and he, he, he was, uh, when he wrote it, he was giving 1C as, as, as the dangerous kind of, uh, you know, point, not 2C. I think it's really important for everyone to realise this. That target had no basis in, in science in terms of what was acceptable or would have been manageable. Yeah. What it was is the IPCC knew that the pathway and the, the evolving trend was so high, they had to drag a number like 2C two, two out of the clouds because it, there was no credibility for aiming for anything lower. Yeah. But for any of us who are studying this, this uh, predicament a lot, we know that 2C is a complete and utter fiction. Yeah. There was n never any chance of limiting it to 2C. Yeah, absolutely. What's been, con I mean, concerning me, I mean, uh, we all know about this, but I mean, um, you know, the Pacific is the centre of these events. This is this is where, you know, a lot of this is, well, you know, is, is, you know, is coming from, and yet it's the most, it's the least talked about area or reported area in the world, with the possible exception of Africa, and and both of those areas, Africa and the Pacific, are the most affected by by, by climate change. And when I, 
started to look into this, it was it was frightening because I found that most of the islands in the area they're um, they're suffering from uh, from drought with um, pro water problems, even pro problems producing uh, food, and that's absolutely unprecedented. One of the problems that is happening as our oceans heat up is we're getting two different forms of ocean sea level rise. The first one is from melting ice, the polar ice caps, where uh, the land ice that melts it raises the sea level. But I think a lot of the sea level rise that we've seen so far is a result of thermal expansion. Yeah. As you heat water up, it expands in volume. And that that what ha that's been doing to our Pacific Island, that the, the, the pressure around the atolls and around the islands from the rising sea is so great that now that we're getting intrusion of salt water into the aquifers and into the wells, and also it's changed the pH of the land. So as you said, that crops are failing, and this is at the very, very early stages of abrupt yeah. climate change. That's right. One of the things that I think that the, the developed countries, New Zealand, Australia, and the rest of the, the around the Pacific Rim, like the, Japan and the United States and Canada, we have to take responsibility for the damage that we have done to the ecosystems of these countries. And there are profits that have been invested in the developed world that have been derived as a result of the of the ecological chaos that's been inflicted on these countries. But the opposite this, is... Yeah, the opposite is happening, isn't it? I mean, they're being thrown under the bus. Um, they've been told they can't can't come here. Um, yeah. I think our, our old enemy racism ha uh, has a lot to do with it. I'm sad to say it that we're still yeah. talking like this in this day and age. But uh, these people aren't white Anglo-Saxons, yeah. and they've been chucked under the bus. Yeah, it's a complete disgrace. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's part of the, um, the whole financial paradigm that, I mean, uh, you know, it's just like Greece is being thrown under the bus now. They're being made to... It's, it's, the, it's the 